Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Well, it is currently 9.55 p.m. It's a little early for me on this vlog. Usually I vlog a little bit later. Uh, it is at 9.55 p.m. on this hot and humid, but beautiful Sunday evening going into Monday. My favorite night of the week. And it is currently 81 degrees outside. We had some um, light showers earlier. It rained a little bit. Uh, like in the movie Rear Window, when uh, I love when um, Thelma Ritter, do you guys know the actress Thelma Ritter? I'm like obsessed with her. She's been, she was like a character actress. She's not alive anymore, but she was like a character actress and she was in like Rear Window. She was in another Alfred Hitchcock movie. She was in Miracle on 34th Street. Um, she just is fantastic. But anyway, she played like the nurse that came over and took care of Jimmy Stewart in Rear Window. And I and there's a line, it like thunderstorms this entire night. And he's like up and down, up and down. Like, well, not literally because he's in a wheelchair. But he's like, can't sleep. He wake, gets up, you know. And he keeps on, that's when he like looks in the backyard to see what's going on. Have you guys never seen Rear Window? If you haven't seen Rear Window, watch it. It is such a great summer movie to watch. And, um, like, Alex watched it, and he thought it was actually pretty scary. Um, so, speaking of older movies, when we first got together, I was like, we should watch some old movies. And I meant, like, Alfred Hitchcock movies, you know, Jimmy Stewart, um, Cary Grant, you know, Audrey Hepburn, uh, 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 um, I can't think of her name, Grace Kelly, those, you know, people that I loved back in the day that I would watch with my mom, like Arsenic and Old Lace, and the Jimmy, you know, the Alfred Hitchcock movies and stuff. And Alex was like, well, like, how old? Like, I think he said something like 2000, before 2000, and I was like, yeah, like 1950s. So anyway, but we watched Rear Window, and then we also watched The Man Who Knew Too Much, and he really liked both of those, because we were going to watch all the Albert Hitchcock movies last year, and we didn't get around to them. I think I've seen most of them. There's only a few that I haven't seen. I actually have the DVD set of every single one of his movies. Um, one of my friends got that for me years ago. I have an eyelash that is caught underneath my eye. But anyway, um, in the movie, she says, it like thunderstorms the night before, and she says, I thought that the rain would cool things down, but it just made the heat wet. And I love that line so much. I don't know why, but I do. I don't know if this is my contact or if it's my eyelash. I think it's my eyelash, and it's driving me crazy. Anyway, Alex is inside, and he's talking to our friend in Miami. So, um, I took a shower because I was like sitting on the front porch. I was filming videos. I was going in and out, have the true crime book club, whatever. So I was like, I'm going to take a shower and feel good about myself. Do you ever do that? Just like take a shower and do your hair to feel nice. And, um, so I took a shower. I used all the Sol de Janeiro products. I used the shampoo and the conditioner. And I also used the, um, I think it's called body cream, but it's just a shower gel, but it's like more of like a cream. It's like a shower cream. I used that. And then I got out and I used the the, I think it's called Boom Boom Cream. I always say Bum Bum Cream, but somebody said Boom Boom Cream to me. They said it's pronounced Boom Boom Cream, so I don't know. Um, so I use that lotion, which I don't typically use. Did I tell you guys what happened about this? Oh my God, you guys, you want to talk about bitter. So the last time, was it the last time that we went or was it the time before that that we went to Florida? I had a brand new container of the um, Coco Cabana cream, which is my favorite. Speaking of which, I also have the hand sanitizer that I ordered last time, and it's just been sitting on our bathroom counter, so I was like, I'm gonna bring this into my car, because Tanya, whenever we come out of someplace, she's always like, do you have hand sanitizer? Now I can just say, yeah, here it is. Um, and I'm also gonna open my Diet Coke while I'm sitting here just rambling about 50 things at the same time. This is really all over the place tonight. I have just been so energetic and so positive and so happy today, and I just spilled this all over myself. And I just think that I'm, like, in such a great mood that, like, sometimes when I'm such... You know, it's funny, because my mom was very much like this, too. Like, she would get real excited, and she'd be, like, in a good mood and whatever. And I'd be like, Mom, you know, like... And she'd be like, you don't want your mom to have fun. You don't want your mom to... This was a big lesson for me in the whole be too much thing. You know, because I think we all, at times, get embarrassed of our parents. She'd say, you don't want your old mom to have fun. You don't want your old mom to dance in the kitchen or sing out. And I'd say, yes, mom, I, I want you to sing out loud. I want you to, because she'd say, sing out, dance in the kitchen, sing out loud. I'd say, I want you to have fun. Oh, no, 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 you don't, you know, whatever. And then I'd feel bad. And so I'd be like, no, let's dance in the kitchen. Let's sing and stuff. And we would, you know. Um, and now I'm just like, I look back on that. And I was like, 
let's just have fun, you know? And, but when I start having a lot of fun, I get very energetic. And I think sometimes, like, that energy is a lot for people. I, I do think that, like, my close friends are used to it, you know? But I've had quite a few people that are, like, not close, close friends that when I'm like, oh, oh, oh yeah, I get, like, real, like, hey, hey, hey. And they're always kind of, like, they're the ones that kind of, like, they don't really know what to do with it. And I think because I'm just, like, all over the place, tangential. <laughs> That's so funny. In high school, we used to say that. We used to say, oh, we're so tangential. We used to we go off on all these different tangents. Um, but because I'm like that, you know, I do find my way back to the beginning at some point. So the Thelma Ritter thing. But anyway, I was using the Sol de Janeiro products. And then I was just kind of sitting there in my robe and I was letting my hair dry. I've been letting my hair dry naturally. I like that in the, with the humidity. And then I put on this stuff that I got from Target. I've been thinking about doing this video on my Peter Does Stuff channel where I do, it's like an anti, anti haul because I have so much stuff on my bathroom counters and underneath my bathroom sink. And I have like all of this stuff that's probably expired now that I like in this one drawer that I keep everything. Oh, Tony Jean's calling me. That I haven't, um, that I, I need to like get rid of and replace and then buy stuff that I will actually use because there's so much stuff under there that like I don't even have room for anymore and I don't know what to do you know with all this stuff so yeah I've been thinking about doing that on my Peter Dust Stuff channel just like going through everything in my bathroom I think I'm gonna do that so let me pour this Diet Coke she's either calling just to catch up she was gonna go out on the boat today but it was really cloudy today or she's gonna text me here in a second and say fountain um, so then Alex was talking to his friend on the phone, like I said, that lives in, our friend that lives in Miami and he was catching up with her having a little phone date. So I was like, well, I'm going to go out to the driveway and I'm going to vlog from the driveway a little bit and then I'm going to go drive around and vlog and then I'm going to listen to my audiobook. So I finished the Ice and Bone book last night that was for our book club today. Uh, we had our book club for a true crime book club. It was fantastic. It was really good. Um, it's fun. It was great. We had a great, great book club today. And um, we went like an hour and a half. And there weren't a lot of people in there. I think it's like the max, there were like 25. But the majority of the time, there was like 22 people. Which doesn't sound like a lot. But if you think about it, like a book club with like 22 people. Who have literally all of them almost have read the book. I think maybe like 18 or 19 people had read the book. When you think of it from that point of view, that like that's a lot of people, you know? And... Um, we had just had, we just had such a blast. It was so much fun. And we guested a couple people. Bunny guested and Ebony guested. And they typically always do. And then um, Taylor was in there for a while. So, hey, Taylor. And Karen is like our comment, like, you know, the moderator person. She like, you know, watches the comments. And then like at the end, she comes in and we guest her. And um, she's kind of like the, the unofficial third. <laughs> Uh, you know, of the group. So, anyway, or official third. She write. I mean, she does m manage the comment section. I mean, we look over there and see what the comments are saying. <clears throat> but Karen is so fantastic because she collects them all and she puts them on a spreadsheet and types them out and stuff, and then she reads them at the end of us. So that way, the people that don't want to guest, or the people that um, didn't get a chance to guest, because sometimes we have too many people. You know, they. Um, then they get their comments heard that way and we can still discuss them. So she'll say like who said what. Um, you know, it's interesting. We like this book didn't have a lot of people that wanted to guest. I have to say, I think this is probably one of my favorite books that we've read for a true crime book club. I had a lot of issues with it. I had a lot of issues with it. And um, it's interesting because, you know, the author started out with the whole thing being about oppressed native Alaskan women and him paying homage to them and how the whole book was going to be about that. It wasn't going to be about the killer. The entire book is about the killer, period, in the story. I mean, there is some mention of the victims and there's also this woman named Disa who's an activist that he talks about quite a bit in the book, but like only when it like furthers the story of the killer, like in the courtroom and things like that. It's not really, it doesn't go into the background and say, you know, like, go back and say, well, so-and-so was born and such-and-such. Such. I'm trying to think of who did that that was, like, so fantastic. Well, Jax Miller really did a great job 
of talking about the Bible family since the time that the girls were abducted up till now or in the last couple years. But there was somebody, I just, we just read this, I can't remember who it was that we read recently. I don't know if it was Elon Green in the last call book, but it was somebody that we read. Okay, so that was April. What was our March book? Our March book was Jax Miller. It was some book that we read where it would start talking about the victim and what happened to them. Oh, that was the Elon Green book. And then it would go back literally to like, they were born such and such year and this was their family growing up. And then this is where they got married and this is what happened to them and all this kind of stuff. I'm almost positive it was the Elon Green book. And I just thought it was so fantastic how it happened. That book was 100% about the victim. It wasn't about, um, it wasn't about the, uh, where was, okay. Last call. Oh, People Who Eat Darkness. The True Story of a Young Woman. That book kind of did some of, like, the background of her, I feel like. Okay. Oh, God, I forgot I read that book. Let's get back to the party. I don't even know if I really remember that book now. I gave it three stars. It's so funny when I look back at these 40 books that I've read this year. Life After Death. And, oh, The Devil's Not. <clears throat> about the West Memphis Three. It really talked... That was more about the West Memphis Three than it was the victims. But it did talk about the family's victims, too. Well, I don't I remember this. I remember reading this book, but I don't remember... I remember the beginning of it. They're at a party. And he sees this guy that he used to know from, like, high school or something. Or college. He saw in college. And they're both gay. I gave it three stars. Let me see what this book is about. Wedding in Washington, D.C. Can't help but see it as a second chance. Now 35, the men haven't seen it instead. He's outraged by what he sees as the death of gay culture. While Oscar and Sebastian struggle to find their place in a rapidly changing world. Oh, I remember it. And as they collide again and again, both men must reckon not just with one another, but with mistakes. Yeah, I didn't love that book. I think I liked it at the beginning and I didn't at the end. This person responded and said, Oh, Sebastian. Oh, Oscar. I have known both of these boys. I have been both of these boys. Sebastian trying desperately to be mainstream. Oscar trying his best to be the version of queer that he's only read about in books. Both of them, because there was a lot about this author that he was friends with. But both of them navigating the space of time between the Supreme Court same-sex marriage ruling and the Pulse nightclub shooting. Um, yeah. It, that was okay book. I need to read some really fantastic books this year, which is why. <laughs> so, I did. I wanted to save it for um, Peter's Book Club for July, but I just couldn't help it. So, Karen actually just finished Mexican Gothic in, in our book club, and she said like 80% of it, or 85% of it, she was just kind of like, I'm, I don't know, what I'm confused. And then the last 15% or something, she was like, wow. She was like, or the, she said like the first 250 pages were like, I'm very confused. And then like the last 50 pages were just like, wow, what just happened? So, um, I kind of miss sitting in the driveway doing the vlogs. It's nice. I mean, I like driving and doing the vlogs too, but just sitting here. I was actually talking to, oh, my friend that lives down the street. I was talking to her the other night. And she was like, you know, we were talking about like being on lockdown and stuff. And I said, I made videos right there in the car. I just sat right there and I would do vlogs for like an hour and a half. She was like, seriously? And I said, oh yeah. I said, I had so much fun. And I said, and then Alex would be asleep when I went inside. So I didn't want to disturb him. So I would come out here and I would um, like get a Diet Coke or whatever. And then I would either like watch Shit's Creek with my iPad right here. Or I would listen to audiobooks. I would listen to like three. That's how I got through so many audiobooks. I think I read like 17 books in that one month because... I would sit in my car and I would just, and I remember the books that I read too. I remember I read uh, the Crawdad book. I remember I read, oh shoot, we were just, she and I were just talking about this book. The one that they made into a movie with Reese Witherspoon. There's a spider crawling across my windshield. <laughs> kind of interesting just to watch it because I can see it because my windshield, I cleaned my whole car out the other night before. I picked up Michael and I vacuumed it all out and I cleaned the windows and the windshield and stuff like that. 
And I hadn't cleaned out my windshield in a while, and it was funny because I like looked out. I was like, oh my god, it's so clean, so clear and so clean, so clear, and so clear and so clean, so clean and so clear. But anyway, what was that book called? Something about fire, not fire in the neighborhood. Why can't I not remember what that book is called? They made a movie out of it, anyway, um, or a series out of it. Her name is Celeste. I can't, why can't I remember her name? Little Fires Everywhere. It was okay. I think I gave it like four stars. I just wasn't blown away by it like everybody else was. And then I remember, I definitely remember, well there was a science fiction-y kind of book that I read and then I remember reading do you guys remember how scared I would get sitting in this car thinking I saw people outside there? And then the, the one night I saw the orbs behind me. Do you remember that? I mean, I didn't see them until afterwards, but uh, I, I was like, was somebody out there? And then I went like that. And when I did that, like the orbs went behind my head. Do you remember that? Oh my God. So, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh yeah, I read, oh, Grady Hendrix, Southern um, Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. When is his next book coming out? I want to look that up. He is such a great writer. It's probably already out. I don't even know it. Grady Hendrick's new book. <gasps> what? Dead Leprechauns and Devil Cats. Strange Tales. What is this? Tales of the White Street Society. Oh, I don't wanna read that. Okay, the final support group, final girl support group. You know what, there's so many authors that do this. I feel like this is like the fifth book that I've read about it. I mean, I love Grady Hendrix and he's fantastic. But there's a lot of movies about this coming out too. I read the one that was by Riley Sager. Did you guys read Riley Sager? Okay, let me tell you something about it. So the first book by Riley Sager that I read, I think was Final Girls. And it was, so what it was was, there had been all of these different people that had been murdered. Like, like, okay, so like you go to a campsite and there's 10 people that are murdered. Kind of like a horror movie, you know? Horror movie, you know? I can never say that word, horror, horror movie. Horror, 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 horror doesn't matter anyway and then the final girl you know but like imagine this was like true but fiction okay and so there were like four of them or something like that and there were like five of them and the first one got killed like somebody came and killed her and so the other four were like banding together the thing about Riley Sager is well first of all Riley Sager used to write write under another name it's a male and he didn't get the attention and the acclaim that he wanted. So, like, his PR agent or somebody, like, they rebranded him. He changed his name. Like, he writes under the alias Riley Sager, which is more, like, ambiguous, like, gender-wise. And they allow people to assume that it's a woman that's writing these kind of thriller novels, which I thought was really interesting. I read this whole article about it. And, um, but the thing is, I, the other book by Riley Sager that I read was about the girl that was like uh, house sitting in the apartment building in New York City. All of his books are kind of like, did I read this before or did I watch this movie before? They're all very much like taken from like a movie or a book idea and they're turned into a book, you know? So then there was another book that I read about this final girl and it was like her at the very end in the sky and it wasn't called Final Girls but it was something like that. But that's kind of like a trope is it like a, a book trope these days and a movie trope? So here it is. Let's read this. Okay. Is it already out? It cannot be out already. Okay, wait. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, if this is... If this is out already, I am going to be so bitter that I didn't start that book. Okay, wait. Grady... Here, I'm going to look one. Hendrix. Yeah, I haven't read We Sold Our Souls. That's the one I haven't read. I think I've read all of his other books. Load air, it said. What's the problem? Tap again. I always have problems with Goodreads. Okay. Okay, it comes out July 13th, 2021. And it's not letting me get to the description part of it. Of course not. 
I heard it's on Amazon. In horror movies, there's that word. The final girls are the ones left standing when the credits roll. They made it through the worst night of their lives, but what happens after? Like his best-selling novel, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which was, I mean, unbelievably fantastic. Uh, and important, too. Gra I mean, and, like, timely about, like, you know, history, even though it takes place today. Grady Hendrix's latest... But if you read him, if you've never read him before, read My Best Friend's Exorcism and then read the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires because they go in that order. And the second book is supposed to be like the counterpart of the mothers to their daughters, which were in the first book, but not really. Um, Grady Hendrick's latest is a fast-paced, frightening, and wickedly humorous thriller. From Chainsaws to Summer Camp Slayers, the final girl support group pays tribute to and shyly subverts our most popular horror films. Movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Scream. Okay. Lynette Tarkington, there's a name for you for a book, is a real-life final girl who survived a massacre. For more than a decade, she's been me meeting... For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other final girls and their therapists and support group for those who survived the unthinkable, working to put their lives back together. Then one woman misses a meeting and their worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to rip their lives apart piece by piece. But the thing about final girls is that no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never, ever give up. And that's like the Riley Sager book. I mean, it's getting great reviews. Oh, Charlene Harris, what did she say? The final girl support group sizzles with action, originality, and a gleaming concept sharp as a scalpel. She's the one that wrote the True Blood series, which is actually called the Sookie Stackhouse series. We interviewed her for our website years ago. She was so fantastic. A great read, this is from the New York Times. A great read, Hendrix excels at writing horror humor. His characters are funny and real, though at least one will definitely lose a limb at some point. <laughs> though the final girl's plight has all the scares of great horror fiction, there is an element of truth in their situation that will be recognizable to anyone who has experienced real trauma. Oprah Daly. If you grew up on a diet of 80 slashers movies, the final girl support group, like Oprah did, I doubt it, group is the, uh, if you grew up on a diet of, not, I mean, it's not from Oprah, obviously, but if you grew up on a diet of 80 slashers movies, the final girl support group is the book you've been waiting for. Clever, fast-paced horror comedy. I mean, maybe it's from Oprah. Who knows? Did she write that review herself? It, wouldn't it be so funny if there was a review from Riley Sager, but there's not. If, um... There's some, like, long reviews in here. I'm not going to read any more of them. But if you um, have read the Riley Sager book, will you let me know in the comment section below if you think that that sounds familiar? Okay, let's read one last one of these. Grady Hendrix Candy... This is from Mark... This is from Mick Garris, writer and director of The Stand, Bag of Bones, and The Shiny miniseries. Grady Hendrix Candy new novel, The Final Girl Support Group, gathers all the tropes... I love his titles, by the way. Um, gathers all the tropes and iconography... Iconic... Iconic... Why can't I hear that word in my head? Iconography. Iconography? That's not how it's pronounced. Of a dec decade's worth of slasher movies. Throws them into a blender with much more wit and intelligence and... Why can't... That word is driving me crazy now. Uh, throws them into a blender with much more wit and intelligence than any of those movies displayed in a truly original, compelling, suspenseful, suspenseful tour de force with a knowing wink. Hendrix has a rare, unique voice in a, in a genre sorely in need of more. I mean, he is such a fantastic writer, but he's like more than just a horror writer, I think. So, I'm going to have to get that. I'm very excited about that. You know what? But right now, I started the book that Tanya um, told me to read, that I had told her to read, the <laughs> Taylor Jenkins read book. I started it today, and it's beautiful right from the beginning. So, here it is, the final girl support group. Pre-order with one credit. I just ordered it. Whenever I'm out of credits, I always buy credits. So if I ever want to buy a book, I just, like, I've been trying to do that lately. Isn't that bad? I've been buying so many books lately. Here are the books I bought. Second Grave on the left. 
Jay's gay agenda. I saw somebody posted that on Instagram. The Fascinator, or somebody posted on Instagram. The Gunkle. Oh, this is supposed to be really funny by Stephen Rowley. And it's about this guy. It's like very much like Auntie Mame. Um, he has to take care of his like nephew and niece. And he's gay, but he's like Annie Mame, and he's all about like the party and whatever. But then he all of a sudden has to take care of his ne nephew and niece. It's supposed to be really good. The Return by Rachel Hart Harrison, Social Intercourse by Greg Howard, Sharp Obje Objects by Jillian or Gillian Flint because I've never read it. I've tried so many times. And I thought just get it. It's nine hours and thirty-four minutes. A Murder on a Girl's Night Out. Somebody recommended that to me by Ann George. The series. They're cozies. After the End by Amy Plum. Dear Sweet Pea, Julie Murphy. That's the last Julie Murphy book that I have to read. Um, and I think it's a middle grade book. It's pretty long for a middle grade book. Six hours and twenty minutes. The Beautiful Room is Empty by Evan White, Dead in the Water, and I can't say the others because I might be picking one of those for the true, for my Peter's Book Club for July. I think I know which one I'm going to pick for Peter's Book Club for July. So anyway, uh, before I start driving, I was going to... Oh, I have a text. Who's that from? Oh. <laughs> Um, I thought I would go in and read some comments because I haven't done that on a while for a while on here. So what do we think about that? Do we like that idea? Sure, Peter. You do what you want to do. It's your vlog. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, speaking of books, GSL Makeup said, I love Daisy Joan and the Six. <clears throat> it was by Taylor Jenkins Reid who wrote Ev uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. She said, I love Daisy Jones and the Six. It was fantastic. I've got Malibu Rising, but I haven't started it yet. Okay, well, start it and read it with me. I started it today. This was, uh, uh, Maricela said, uh, this is a perfect Sunday vlog, a potpourri of topics and a little suspense mystery driver. <laughs> I went in and started telling a story about the mystery driver, and I was telling a story about mentioning it to a friend today, and I, of course, said my friend's name and whatever. So, um, do, 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 do. Sean said, I'm late to this vlog, but I made it. Just finished drama class. You were a hoot. I hope you and Alex are doing well. Wishing my good Judy's a wonderful week ahead. To you too, Sean. Um, Minimalist, I love your profile picture too, which is just like this little leaf of this plant. One of the reasons your vlog is so good is because you go into lengthy detail about things, people, events, the way someone does with a close friend and we feel connected. Like when you told Michael that you talked to us the way you would talk to Tanya. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um... Gina said, hello, handsome. I am reading American Dirt. It is on Oprah's book club. Have you read it? I have not, and it's on my book. It's on my list. I actually was just looking today because I bought another Oprah book, The, Van the Vanishing of the Vanquishing or something like that, and I was like, I've got to read these books that are on Oprah's book list because I always love them. The Vanishing Half, that was on Oprah's list. Um... And uh, it's supposed to be fantastic. So I want to read that. And I also want to read... Um, I also want to read the... Uh, what do you call it? Um, American Dirt. All right. Let's go on. Sarah said, hello, hello, Peter. Just in time to watch the vlog after getting a quick nap in. I've never read James Patterson's books. But I heard he's a pretty good writer from what people tell me. I definitely, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll tell you the story about James Patterson. I definitely wanna read more this summer and explore what new books are there. Hope everyone is having a good weekend. Okay, so here's the deal with James Patterson. Here's my issue, right? So James Patterson wrote a couple books way back in the day, like in the 70s, okay? He wrote, I mean, I think he really is like, and he has a master class in writing and marketing, and I think he is, his story is kind of a master class in writing and marketing as well. So he wrote two books. I believe the one book was called Black Sunday, and the other book was called The Machete Club. I could be wrong, but I feel like those are two of his earliest books, okay? So then he wrote, He then like later he came out, and I read, and there were three of them, 
I could look him up, but I'm not going to, because to be honest with you, I'm just not that invested with James Patterson anymore. But there was a time that I literally bought every single one of his hardbacks the day it came out. The other thing is if you go to any kind of like bookseller or like, especially like a Target or like a Meyer or something, he has like six new books out at any given time. He's got like a middle grade book out. He's got a kid's. It's all about the money. It's literally all about the money. Okay. Which is whatever. That's fine. But he doesn't really write these books anymore. He has a team of people that write these books. And then they present him with ideas. Like when you see, and it's like James Patterson and Judy Smith. Like Judy Smith is writing that book. Okay. James Patterson isn't doing it. And she's also doing it with a team of people. He talked about, I watched part of this masterclass one time. And he talked about how people come and they present ideas to him. And then like they'll write a chapter and then he Proves it and all this kind of stuff, okay? So when I first read, I think Kiss the Girls was the first book that I read, but I feel like Along Came a Spider was second. I feel like it, Along Came a Spider might have been before Kiss the Girls, but I read them Kiss the Girls and then Along Came a Spider. So I don't know what order they go in. All I know is that those two books James Patterson wrote. He sat down at a computer or a typewriter and he wrote those books out, okay? They are so specific. They are so detailed. Kiss the Girls was terrifying to read. The movie w with Morgan Freeman was horrible. I love Morgan Freeman as an actor. Morgan Freeman is no Alex Cross, okay? And I read enough of those Alex Cross books to know, let me just tell you. I mean, I've read so many of them. So he's the main character of the detective um, in these James Patterson books. Well, now James Patterson has 15 different series out, you know? Um, here's what happened over time. James Patterson became so wealthy and was doing so good and every book that he put out went right to the New York Times bestseller list that he developed a formula for his writing, okay? And his formula is like 291 pages, uh, 91 chapters, and every chapter is like a page and a half or two and a half pages. They're really easy reads. Like, you can just tear through these books. Now, if you're somebody that wants just to sit on the front porch or on the couch and have mindless reading, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? And some of these books have, like, kind of unique ideas. Some of them don't. I have friends of mine, <laughs> trust, okay, that love his books and to this day like go on and on and on about like oh my god I just read this James Patterson book and it was so good right a friend of mine not too long ago this was probably like a year ago you guys might have known or might remember this I'll tell you when I read it she recommended she was like I, we were having this conversation and I said to her I said she said something about she loves James Patterson he's her favorite author I said girl I said, James Patterson don't write his own books. She know that, right? And she was like, well, I don't really care who writes his books. She's like, I just love his books so much. I think they're so great. And I said, well, if that's your attitude about it, then I think that that's fantastic, you know? So anyway, she was like, but I will tell you this. She was like, I am going to get you to love James Patterson again. And I was like, oh, really? She's like, okay, wait. A Long Game of Spider is one. I have some of them listed on here. Kiss the Girls is number two. I don't even have that listed on here. I will tell you. Okay, so whatever. So she told me to... Did I not even put it on here? Well, the Angel, the Angel Experiment books, the Max Maximum Ride ones, I was actually thinking about rereading those because the first one, it's about these kids that are like hybrid and they have wings and they can fly and they escape from this lab. I actually really liked that series. Um... Here, let's go in here and see, because I can't remember what this book was that I read by James Patterson. I mean, he's got 900 books. How am I going to go in here and find it on Goodreads? But she told me to read this book, and I read it, and I was just like, I mean, it's whatever. It's... I have read The Women's Murder Club. I read, like, the first ones of those. Beach House I read. Jack and Jill I read. That, Matt. Oh, maybe I read a, that, the whole series of Maximum Rights series. Hide and Seek I read, Roses Are Red. I mean, I've read so many of these. I think I read the first, like, 10 or 15 books of the Alex Cross series. Pop Goes the Weasel, Weasel, Cross, I read that. That's book number 12, so I've read all those. Violets Are Blue. Now that I'm looking at these, okay, the covers, I will tell you, are beautiful. I'm kind of like, well, maybe I would like to go back and read on some, read some of these. What was the book that she told me to read? And why did I not rate it on here? Oh, Zoo was the one that I tried to read like three years ago. It was so bad. It was about how these animals like were infected and they were taken over New York City and it was so freaky I didn't even like reading it. I ended up giving it three and a half stars though. That was generous. Um, 
the quickie. When did I read this? I gave it three stars. What did I say? I wrote a review. Oh my God, July 31st, 2019. Was it that long ago? I can't, time flies, you know, when you're having fun. Finally finished this. I really enjoyed the first, the, the last half once I started uh, speed reading it. My full review will be up on my booktube channel. It says, <laughs> I started it December 30th, 2018, and I finished it July 31st of 2019. <laughs> that tells you how much I loved that book. Anyway, um, I don't know. Uh, if you have never read a James Patterson book before, I would definitely recommend reading Along Came a Spider or Kiss the Girls. They're scary books, and they're very good reads. And if you don't really care about, like, the writing or whatever, just, you know, like, if you just read for fun. Like, like I said, I have friends of mine that they, just, like, they buy every single one of them. My friend Scotty, the one that passed away a couple years ago, he absolutely loved those books. He loved those James Patterson books. He, I think he had every single book James Patterson ever put out. You know, that's just my opinion about him as a writer. I just, you can read what you want to read. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait, here. Okay, Monet said something about this. will be interesting. Um, she always says stuff about books. Hello, Peter. I have a ton of James Patterson books. I have read a lot of his books. I really like his Women's Murder Club books. I got a whole stack of books from Amazon today. I recently found a new-to-me author that I have become a fan of. I have books that I am looking forward to reading. Aw. Who's the author? Okay, yeah, let, who's the author? Carla Sorensen. I don't know who that is. If you're, okay, who responded to this? Gina said, uh, I'm going to try, she said, oh, who's the author? I'm going to try the Women's Murder Club books from James Patterson, and then Monet said um, that the, uh, the Murders Book Club are amazing, and the, re the author that she's going to read is Carla. Okay, I have to just tell you, having read all the James Patterson books, like, up to that point, because then there became a point where I just kind of, like, stopped reading them, and so I read, like, maybe the first two or three of the Murders Book Club, the, the Women's Murders Book Club, they're good, okay? Because those are, like, more of the earlier ones of his. But, like, if you're going to really... You really want to see James Patterson at his best, I'm telling you right now. Monet might disagree with me, and that's all right. We can all have our own opinion, right? We can all... But we don't have to... We can agree to disagree, and everybody can like what they like. But I'm telling you right now, if you really want to get, like, James Patterson at his finest, read his, first, his earlier books. Um... Oh, Paula said something about that show that Michael was saying he was watching, Dark Side of the Ring. So good. I am not much into wrestling, but she said, love the Dark Side of the Ring. So good. I am not much into wrestling, but my father has always been, and it's nice to have something to talk to him about. Let's give him something to talk about. And then she said, that is somewhat new to us both. Oh. And then Nochia, M Mandy, Julie, Tammy. And Teresa all gave emojis. So many people were like, have Michael on again. Michael's going to come on again, trust. Um, Debbie C said, love the sound of the birds singing, rain falling, and the sounds of summer nights when you have the window open and you can hear the crickets and see the fireflies. By the way, you should wear more Hawaiian floral shirts looking good. Oh, thank you. Oh, this is where I ask everybody to put their most peaceful sound. Um, Capture neon, neon, Capture neon set. My most peaceful sound that I need to sleep is rain hitting a window with light thunder sounds in the background. Well, I can tell you, we, we sleep to that every single night. You know why? Because Alex will be, Alexa, lights off. And he's got it all programmed up. And we hear, it's thunderstorms is what we listen to. And it's fantastic. Uh, Bonnie said, have you read anything about Jack the Rip? Jack the Ripper in your True Crime Book Club. I know it's more historical, but there's lots of books on him. Love True Crime Book, uh, but love True Crime, but going through a little slump where I just don't feel like reading one at the moment. I don't either, and I'm glad I finished that one because I want to read more, like, other books. <laughs> you know, I really could just read cozies left and right, honestly. I mean, I shouldn't be coming for nobody with re one to read James Patterson when I read cozies, and they're just not the most highly developed books, most of them, except for the Janet Deleon books. Well, that's not true. Some of them are pretty... I would say the cozies that I've read 
Well, maybe not the Allison Brooks books about the Haunted Library, but I would say the Char the Dorinda Jones books, the Janet DeLeon books, and the Stephanie Plum books by uh, Janet Ivanovich. I feel like they're a little bit more of a, a, a detailed and character developments a little bit better than the James Patterson books. Um, but yeah, to each is to each throne. I mean, when you read cozies, okay, about a Christmas uh, tree farm. <laughs> You probably shouldn't be judging other people's readings. You know what I mean? True story, right? Anyway, um, we have not read about Jack, Jack the Ripper. We also have not done Bonnie and Clyde, which Mel really, really wants to do. Um, and we just haven't really found the time to fit it in. And we also haven't done the Black uh, Dahlia, which um, Mel originally really wanted to do. And now I really want to do as well. I want to do something on Bonnie and Clyde too. I just don't know a lot about them. And then we just kind of look and see what's up for the moment. And then we also want to do, uh, yes, we do want to do Jack the Ripper. And then we also want to do, who's the woman? I, why can't I think of her name now? Super famous. Christina Ricci played her in some movie. She killed her fan. Uh, Lizzie Borden. We want to do something about Lizzie Borden, too. Speedy Janet said, I am loving the henna artist by Alka Josie. It, it is a Reese's book club selection. I haven't read that. Um, but I have heard of it. Kristen um, said, the Delphi case, they have some guy arrested that they think did it. I live in Kokomo an hour away from you. Yeah, I know, but there's like speculation that it wasn't him. And you live in Kokomo. I used to work um, with all of the probation officers at Howard County and the judges in Howard County. I worked with them for 13 years. Like some of them are like my very dear friends, the judges and um, the pro probation and parole officers that live in Kokomo. Uh, they're some of my dearest, I love them. Um, I used to go to Kokomo all the time back in the day to do assessments and evaluations. That's so crazy. Um, okay. So if you guys aren't from Indiana, you don't know, Kokomo is about, she's going to kill me for saying this. Okay, Kristen, I'm sorry. But Kokomo is like three stop signs and Chrysler. <laughs> Chrysler's in Kokomo. That's what it is. And two high schools. Kokomo, or three high schools. Is it Kokomo South, Kokomo North? and Northwest. Are those the three high schools there or is it just Kokomo and Northwest? I'm not sure. I could be wrong though. <laughs> but anyway. Hey Kristen! Maybe we'll run into each other sometime. Um, a butter loves Cassio said I'm in Illinois. I don't know what is in the weed kids are smoking here but it smells awful. I think the street term is skunkweed. I have to wonder what the long term effects are. I hate the pot the smell of pot and I've always hated the smell of pot. I hated the smell of pot back in the day when I smoked it and I hate it now. My good friend Chani, she's like, she thinks it smells good. Like when we walk somewhere and you can smell it, somebody smells, she's like, mm, it smells so good. I'm like, you didn't even really smoke pot back in the day. She's like, well, I did a couple times. She, I'm like, you didn't really even, I'm like, how do you like it? I hate the smell of, of pot or weed or whatever you want to call it. Mary Jane, you call it whatever you want. I don't do it. I don't like the smell of it. Um, but I dealt with it back in the day. I didn't like the smell of it then either. I felt I felt like it smelled dirty to me. That's what I thought back in the day. I didn't have any problems smoking it. Uh, oh, Monet said, hello, Peter. I love the sound of motorcycles, trains in the night, and the ocean. I love them too. Uh, motorcycles, that's interesting. Um, trains in the night, I love, and the ocean. Are, those are two of my favorites. Brooke said, I love the sound of rain hitting a window, a fire crackling. Oh, a fire crackling, I love that. Uh, pretty wind chimes in the wind and birds chirping in the morning. I have my wind chimes out here and I don't even really know where to put them because... So we have our fern hanging and I love Gertie Birdie that's out there. But like you guys, I was thinking this today. I was like, she must get so bored. Because she's when I was sitting out there, she flew in and then she just was sitting there forever. And I know the babies haven't been born, born yet because I haven't heard them. So, um, I think she's got like, I looked and she's got like six or seven eggs in there. She just sits in there all day long. Or is that what birds do? Do they just sit on their eggs all day long? Don't they get bored? They got no TV or radio or anything. I'd be so bored. Um, but anyway, I don't know where to put my wind chimes. That's usually where I hang my wind chimes. And we don't really get any like wind up that way anyway. So I'm just kind of like bitter about the whole thing anyway. But anyway, I've said anyway about five times in a row. 
Tazley said, I love to hear my dad's voice, birds chirping, the sound of wind and rain, and the sound of my cat snoring. I love that. You know what's so funny is, this is like one of my most comforting feelings. I don't know why. But you guys know, like, when people's houses and stuff smells different, like, I'm like, I pick up on scent so strongly that I feel, I was just something about, I was reading some book and they were talking about this. Oh, it was A Pumpkin by Julie Murphy. He was talking about this in there. I feel like, uh, like, when you can, like, it, but it's like, now I've been in some houses that don't smell good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they smell like cat litter and piss. I'm just saying, okay? I shouldn't be saying that word, but you know what I mean? I'm just saying, some houses don't smell so good. But most people's houses that I go to smell really good, you know? And, um, and then, but, like, you remember that person associated with that smell. Oh, my God. The other day, I was watching Michael's vlog with Emily, and she was like, and he, Peter smells so good, which I love that. People always say that to me, and it's because I wear, like, the same cologne every single time, and nobody else wears that cologne, and it just means so much to me when people say that, because I'm like, I really do care a lot about, like, if my breath smells good, and I smell good, and things like that, you know? Um, so, anyway... That was really nice. Emily, if you're watching this, I really appreciate that. She is just such a sweetheart. Um, but anyway, oh, I told you guys about the comment that made me laugh when somebody was like, Michael is good looking. He is so handsome. And Lisa responded back and said, oh, by the way, he's taken. He has a wife. Her name is Emily and she's fantastic. <laughs> and I texted it to them and Michael was like, oh, I love Lisa. But anyway, we all like compliments about... And, and, and you know what? And Emily took no offense to that at all because she said something to me that day. She was like, when you mentioned something about Michael, somebody said, oh, he's so handsome. And she looked at him and, see, and she said something. She was like, oh, he'd probably kill me for saying this, but I don't care because he needs to hear it because he is a handsome guy. And um, she said, see, Michael? She was like, a lot of people find you very handsome and confident and whatever. And he was like, yeah, whatever. It is hard, you know, like at first being on like, you know, YouTube or social media, you start completely, you know, like I think there, you go through this point where you like kind of I, I don't know if he did this we don't really talk about this but where you kind of compare yourself or you just are like not super confident or whatever and then you get over it and you're just like F it I'm going to be who I want to be you know what I mean and whoever I am is whoever I am and if people find me handsome they find me handsome and if they don't they don't and that stuff doesn't really matter in the long run anyway you know and uh, so it's just like I don't know but Emily is really cool. She's very encouraging of her husband in this whole... And I love that because it reminds me of Alex. Like, I don't think people would probably assume that by Alex because he is so... You know, like, Tanya's husband is so sarcastic and, like, snarky. Like, but he's so gentle, too. And I get to see those moments because I've been so close to Eric and Tanya for so many years. Alex is very similar to that. Alex is one of the gentlest souls I have ever known in my life. And and I will say that like marriage counseling and doing our individual counseling really, really helped that. He didn't before really have a way to like express and show his emotions. And now he sobs all the time watching stuff. Tonight we were gonna watch the pose finale, and I just was like, I from doing so much today, I was like, I am just gonna have an emotional breakdown. I said, Can we watch it tomorrow night after my literature group? And then um that way we can like fast forward through the commercials and stuff. So we're gonna watch it tomorrow night instead. So sad, it's a series finale. But Alex is so supportive of the YouTube stuff. Like today, he was like, after I got done with the book club, he was like, well, first of all, I had the book club. And his mom and his grandma, we went to brunch with them today and we had such a great time and oh, it was so fun. I got there and I had forgotten my phone and I needed it and to make sure of like the time of like, I mean, I could have gone without it, but I needed it for like to know the time of like the book club and I wanted to tweet out like 40 minutes before the book club and all that kind of stuff. Plus, I knew that I was going to call Mel as soon as I left, right? And so... I ran home. We're literally, I, I timed it. We're like, I think it took me five minutes to get here and seven minutes to get back, which is so crazy from Patashu. So, um, and then, and my food still wasn't even there by the time I got there. So Alex was eating his soup, <laughs> his tomato artichoke, his tomato artichoke soup. But anyway, we got back here and he was like, my mom and my grandma want to come back and sit on the patio. Um, do you mind like while you're doing your book club? And I was like, at first I was kind of like, well, I'm gonna be doing my book club. And he was like, I know. He was like, we'll just be on the patio. And I was like, well, yeah, sure, okay. And so they came and they were out there. And he and his mom had like, you know, like a Truly or a White Claw or whatever it is he buys. And I think his grandma may have had one too. <laughs> and they sat there and then it started raining. They were out there for like a half an hour and then it started raining. And so they came inside and then they left and they were super quiet. And then Alex went upstairs during the live stream. He was just laying in bed listening because he even commented on the conversation that we were saying. He like texted me and told me his comment about uh, the possibilities of what he thought happened with this serial killer, which I read in the book club as well. 
he had a theory about the serial killer. So uh, the batteries have been at halfway mark for a while now, so I have a feeling it might die here in just a little bit. But anyway, um, so yeah, so when I got done with the book club, I just was kind of like sitting there for a second. It was like, I, we, it was like an hour and a half of, you know, like nonstop talking. And I was like, having such a great time, but I was, you know, and he goes, uh, are you going to film? He was upstairs and he's like, are you going to film any videos today? Cause I've been taking Sundays off and I haven't been filming videos. And, um, somebody mentioned that on here. I don't know who said that. I don't know who said, Peter, you should take Sundays off and not film videos, but you know, I really appreciate, like, it's small suggestions like that, like, if you're open-minded to hearing it, because I'm always, like, so driven, I'm like, okay, I want to make these videos, every I always have so many ideas, I have a list of ideas I keep, and I'm like, I want to do this, I want to do that, especially when stuff is, like, popping off drama-wise, but what I loved about that was, and I probably won't take, always take Sundays off, but it really taught me in the month of May that, like, Peter, you can just take a day and drive around and listen to an audiobook if you want to. You don't have to post six videos a day, you know? But I love it so much, that I do. And um, so anyway, he was like, are you going to make any videos today? And I was like, well, I'd like to. And I said, but, like, if you're wanting to come down here and watch TV, I don't want to, you know, you've been up there. He's like, babe. He was like, make your videos. He was like, I don't care. I'm just laying here, you know, playing my game and stuff like that. He was like, looking at stuff online to buy that we're all, we're like dreaming it's birthday month, you know? And so he was like, you know, whatever. He was like, let me me know, you know, like if you want to come down. So I made a drama video, which was it was 27 minutes. So it was almost a half an hour. And I started uploading that, rendering it and uploading it. And then I made a Peterisms video. And, um, and so then I was like, well, babe, I'm done. If you want to, he is so supportive of it. He's always like, do you have to go vlog? If we're on vacation, he was like, do you need me to leave, you know, the room or whatever so you can vlog or do you need to go on the patio? He's always so, so supportive of it. Cause he knows how much I love it. And, um, you know, and he's, he always, like, responds to people that message him and whatever. It's so fantastic to have that. I can't imagine, like, like, he almost gets more, like, when I, like, when people come up to me and they introduce themselves to me, which is very rare, he actually gets noticed out in public more than I do. People will go up to him and be like, are you Peter Mon's husband? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, I watch all of his videos. He FaceTimes me sometimes with them. And he'll be like, oh, I ran into this person and they said they watch your videos. I'm like, hi. My hair is, like, 50 different ways. I don't even care anymore. I'm like, you know, darling, kicking 50. But he's so supportive, like, um, and he gets so... It, tickled and excited when somebody comes up to him. He's like, do you want to take the picture together? And he's just so nice about it, you know? My husband's fantastic. I love him dearly. I love him so much. So what was I going to say? Alex. Now I can't remember. Getting more emotional. Marriage counseling. Where are my comments? Maybe that'll take me back. I know I've gone off on 50 different tangents since I... Oh, well, originally, oh, smells of people's houses. Okay, this is what I was going to talk about. Which I don't know how I got to Alex on that, but whatever. <laughs> so, but his mom does, his mom's house has a very strong smell that's very, very good. And it's very specific. It's kind of spicy potpourri. I don't know why I think that. Because um, she doesn't have any spicy potpourri in the house, but that's what it reminds me of. So anyway, I think maybe it might be her perfume. Um... My mom's house used to smell like her perfume, and every once in a while I smell it. She she wore Michael Kors for Women forever, and then she wore this other one that I bought her, and it was called Zen, and it was just like in this white like bottle, and it was like this like oval, and it was just called Zen, and the house specifically smelled like that for like I bought it for her, and she wore it for like ten years or something, and like the house always smelled like that. But anyway. Um, yeah, it is, it's kind of weird sometimes when all of a sudden I just out of the blue, I'll smell my mom. You know, I'll be like, oh my God, I smell my mom. Is she here? Like, I always think that. Like, is she around me somewhere? My dad has worn Jovan Musk since the inception of time, okay? Do you guys know what Jovan Musk is? I mean, you can get it at the drugstore. It's super cheap, right? And, um, but I cannot stand the smell of musk, Okay, I don't, no offense if that's what you wear, if you're, you know, whatever, but I've had a few friends of mine that are women that wear musk, and they wear, like, the Avon musk, and stuff, I, I don't like it, I don't like the smell of it, I don't know if it reminds me of, like, I don't know, it reminds me kind of of my grandma a little bit, not my mom's mom, my dad's mom, and there's something about it that I don't like, that just, it reminds me of grandma's or something, I don't, I just don't like it. Men's musk, I really don't like, okay, and I don't know why. Um, but, like, whenever I just, like, smell it, it just smells, like, very, like, like alcoholish aftershave to me is what it smells like. 
my dad smells so different than anybody that you know how like cologne and perfume smells differently on different people he smells so different with jovan musk and like he puts very little of it on my dad has such like a unique smell about him and his house and his car his house and his car smell identical and whenever i get into my dad's car whatever car he has ever had i mean it's been like you know car from like every car i've ever been in of my dad's has smelled exactly the same and he's always got those stick pretzels right here because he always eats on the snacks like you know it just cracks me up like he's smoking a cigar or something. He's got those stick uh, pretzels right here. And his car, my dad's car is really clean too. Um, he's got like always just like a briefcase in the back and that's it. <laughs> you know? Uh, well, not anymore because he's not, you know, working anymore. He's retired. His car is so... I love that she said that about um, her dad. The sound of her dad's voice. Because my dad, the smell of his car is just so completely comforting to me. I love that. Okay, what did other people say? <laughs> okay, Lee said, oh my God, yes. As a retired Louisville Metro homicide detective, I understand you wanting to come experience Waverly Hills, but come now instead of at Halloween. Okay, well maybe this summer it's reopened but let me know in the comment section why now versus halloween i would be interested to know that um emmy said love the sound of rain and thunderstorms oh and the wind blowing oh i do too uh christy said hi peter i love the sound of horses walking and turn signals also my dog snoring she doesn't snore very loud but i swear i can't sleep without it love you love you Alex always thinks this is weird, but, like, when I come into bed at night with the dogs, I love the sound of, like, hearing, because Alex, like, when he's, like, asleep, he, like, breathes real deep. And it's something comforting to me about that. Okay. Melissa said, peaceful to me is listening to you vlog. Aw, I love that. Okay, let's see. Michelle said, I could live on my farm and never leave. I find the sound of the birds chirping and my chicken. I love the sound of the birds chirping and my chickens. When I'm, I was like, is it? How did I know that at that very moment it was gonna stop? That is so weird, it was at 30 minutes. I have no idea how I knew that. Okay, I find the sound of the birds chirping and my chickens. When I'm at our lake home, I always sleep with the windows open so I can hear the loons and water lapping around the shore. I love that. Jen said, I, Jen AF, <laughs> she said, I, Jen AF, you better know it, AF. <laughs> Jen AF said, I love being at home. I live by myself and barely ever leave. The battery in my car died because I hadn't been driving it in so long. That just happened to my dad. That literally just happened to my dad. Speaking of my dad's car, he called me and he goes, I ha we haven't left for so long because they just don't go anywhere anymore. They order, like they door dash every single night. I'll talk to my dad. I'll be like, oh, what'd you have for dinner? Oh, we went, we had this. Or, And I, finally, I was like, one night I was like, you guys are going out to eat a lot because they cook all the time. And he goes, Peter, we've been door dashing like every night. We're not going to these restaurants. I'm like, oh, you're door dashing it? He's like, yeah. He was like, we're obsessed with the door dash. They like order door dash constantly. So he was like, my battery, my car, I got in my car and he was like, my battery died. <laughs> he was like, and I had to have somebody come out here and like, you know. So anyway, I have, so she said, <laughs> Jen AF, <laughs> she said, I love being at home. I, Jen AF, I could say that all night long. <laughs> Jen AF. I, I don't know why that cracked that that cracks me up. Jen AF, I love being at home. I live by myself and barely ever leave. The battery in my car died because I hadn't driven it in so long. I have to go back to the office two days a week and it's giving me so much anxiety. I so many of my friends have been saying that. They're like, I just want to work from home for the rest of my life. I don't really understand the point of sending people to work for two days. Like, I don't understand it unless you got stuff that you got to turn in or have meetings or whatever. It just seems pointless to me, you know, except for that. I, maybe it's like write-offs for office space and stuff like that. If you were like a really smart company and you realized though that you really didn't need people to come into work, you know, and you could have them all contract out from home. You could set up an entirely different business plan. So, I don't know why more companies aren't doing that. I think there's a lot to be said for that. Okay. Um, 
Bravo Lee said, Peter, this vlog came out too early and now I have nothing to listen to for bed since I had to watch it right away. LOL. You know what is so funny about that is I think I posted it at like five or six and actually when I posted it, I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't post this this early because I know some people like to listen to it right before they go to bed. But about a year ago, I asked, what's the perfect time for posting a vlog? And a lot of people said 6 p.m. and that's why I kept it at 6 p.m. The battery is dying, so I'm gonna replace it and then I think I'm gonna probably Oh, I was like, I almost drove away with my Coke still kind of empty. Oh, my coffee cup is in there. So I'm gonna change the battery and then I am going to drive off and finish my vlog. I'll read a couple more comments, I'll be right back. Can you believe I've been sitting here this whole time just in the driveway? I've had so much fun tonight doing this. And now I'm gonna listen to my audiobook. And tomorrow is the beginning of a new week. It's fantastic. I have got to order some, oh, that smells like all my lotions and shampoos and conditioners. This is a Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Kiss lip balm. The best lip balm in the entire world. I need to get on there and order some stuff, like Pronto. I think they have some new product shop because I keep on getting all the emails for it. And my friend Valerie always tells me about this Sol de Janeiro stuff they get too. Um, Okay, Tammy, hey Tammy. Tammy said at night, she, Tammy, you have watched forever. Tammy said a train at night can be very peaceful and the turn signal on a car, I love the turn signal on a car. A bathtub being filled with water, oh, I love that too. Although that always reminds me of washing my dogs, I don't know why. Um, Stacy said, oh Stacy, hey! Peter's vlog is peaceful to me, perfect Saturday night. Um, I just looked because like the song changed and I thought it was, um, like somebody calling. Peter's vlog is because it shows up if somebody's calling you, you know, in here. Okay. Ah. Peter, Stacy said, Peter's vlog is peaceful to me. Perfect Saturday night viewing. Also, we live on the prairie and the breeze is peaceful. Love you. Oh, I love that. Okay. Maricela said, I love the sound of birds singing and wind chimes. Karen put blue hearts. Joelle Atal. Joelle said, hearing a distant train in the middle of a summer night is peaceful to me, she said. And Shayla said, we have a train that comes through town. It does sound pretty at a distance. I live by a big airport and every day a plane or multiple will fly over our house. It's very loud and not pretty. <laughs> Honestly makes me think of Donnie Darko every time. It always, whenever I see a plane fly right over, it reminds me of the movie The Morning After. I thought I had my window open. It's frost right here. Uh, the Morning After with Jane Fonda. Last one, Sarah said, hello, hello, Peter. Got to go swimming this afternoon with my mom and get my tan on, LOL, love the shirt. It brings out your eyes. I uh, Then she put eye emojis. She's got emojis all through this thing. Flowers and blue hearts and ah, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Ah, smiley faces. She said, I love listening to calming sounds, especially rain and bamboo sounds because those sounds calm me down when I'm having anxiety. Hope everyone is having a good weekend. Love it. So, all right. <sighs> There's only like two more comments since I um, started reading them. And one of them is, okay, from Adriana talking about the red, the red truck, but I'll go back and read those at another time on another video. I'll catch up in a couple days and read some other videos. Well, oh, let's go. So anyway, ooh, it's really windy outside. I don't know if you guys can see, but do you see the bushes over here at my neighbor's house? They're like blowing in the wind. Doesn't their walkway look so pretty? They are so nice. I love them so much. It is such a blessing to have neighbors that you like. Can I just tell you? Although I will tell you that my neighbor down here, she said, or my neighbor when I was walking the other day, she said, I think there's something going on though with this house down here. And I said, why do you think that? She said, I don't see any adults living in that condo, which in our neighborhood is really weird and I can't believe that the HOA hasn't gotten on it. And she said, I see kids with backpacks coming out, in and out all day long. She's like, they look like, uh, like, um, 
older teenagers. She's like, I see people come in and out, in and out. They just pull up. This car right here just, I mean, this is just, there's like six condos right here, okay? She, this car just pulled up, somebody ran out, and then they left, but the person didn't get in the car. And she's like, I think she's like something, you know, something sketch is going on. Here's the car leaving. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? The pool's open. Haven't been to it yet. I'm telling you right now, the HOA and the management company will not tolerate that for very long. I can't believe somebody hasn't said something about that if that's true. I hadn't noticed it. But maybe it is true. Who knows? Only the shadow knows. All I know is that this girl, I don't think she lives there, but she's there a lot. She looks like she was like maybe like 19, 20 or whatever. She had real long hair, like down to her waist. And she like parked in front of that house last summer. And she was like talking to some guy on the street because I was at the pool and I could see it. And I was talking to this um, other person that was at the pool. Uh, this woman that comes, her mom lives in her neighborhood and she brings her uh, son and then she swims and stuff. And uh, so I saw that girl like, like get real frustrated with the guy. And so she got in her car, like, and she was like throwing her arms up like that. She got in the car and then she came down to the pool and I don't even know how she, I can't remember how she got in the pool because you have to like have a card and stuff to get into the pool. And then she came in and she lay down at the other end, way far away from where we were. And um, she like laid down, she like got in the pool like right when she got there. And then she like laid out like for two seconds so. Like she got in the pool and she got out like in two seconds. And then she laid out on um, the chair and she tried to like get her headphones to work, but they weren't working and she got real frustrated. She was like rifling through her purse and stuff. She had like this huge hippie bag, her hippie purse, and it wouldn't work and she was like real upset about it and stuff. And she was like rifling through there looking for stuff. And <laughs> so she just set her phone next to her head and she played like playlist and it was like the Eagles and like Bob Marley, The Grateful Dead. It was like all that kind of music, you know, from back in the day that I mean, we listened to him when I was in high school. And, uh, and so, oh, then this guy came, this like older guy, real nice older guy in the neighborhood, like everybody's grandpa kind of guy, you know? And so every song that would change, you know, it would be like Hotel California and he'd be like, The Eagles, I love the Eagles. And he'd be like, You like the Eagles too? And she didn't say one word. She was so rude. <laughs> Never saw her again the whole summer. Her boyfriend must have broken up with her. Probably because she's so bitter all the time. That's all I can imagine. I am excited about being up at the pool and meeting with my neighbors again now, you know. I hope it's some of the same neighbors as last year. There's these other two neighbors that I love. They have nicknames for everybody in the neighborhood. They're so hilarious. So, they're both like they've been widowed. And a widow and widower. And then they got together and they got married. And um, they have like houses like all over the place. They have a house in like Del Hollow, Tennessee, which is like a lot of people in Indiana go to. And um, then they have a house in Florida and they have houses that they go all over the place. But they are so funny. Let me just tell you, okay? It is, okay, they're probably, I'm not even lying to you, they're probably late 60s and it is five o'clock somewhere always and also 420, <laughs> okay, for these two. They are hilarious and they are constantly partying. And they, through all through COVID, they would always have, like, in their driveway, they just had, like, a fire pit and, like, ten chairs in a circle. And, like, every night, their friends would, like, sit in the driveway and then have, like, a little get-together. It cracked me up. The party was gonna go on, no matter what. Anyway. Well, listen, you guys, I think I'm gonna get off here now and I'm gonna listen to, um, see, that's why I'm ready to go to the pool, I'm excited. I think I'm gonna get off here now and I'm gonna um, listen to my audiobook for a little bit, um, which I'm very excited about. So, anyway, um, I hope that you guys are having, you know, be kind to one another, like a, but you know, like I said. Uh, like it says in the Four Agreements, always lead with love. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. You need to hear it from me, then I love you. Um, but no, seriously, if nobody else has told you this today, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And be kind to one another. Always lead with love. 
like it says in the four agreements, let's put some compassion, kindness, tolerance, understanding, forgiveness, hope, faith, and courage, wonder, and awe, and amazement, and just be magically amazing human beings, and if you always lead with love, then that will happen, and I hope you guys are having a magically amazing Monday, and I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!